Hi, welcome to Quick Show. My name is Greg Matson, and I am your host. In this episode, we are talking about Giorgia Maloney, who is the Prime Minister-elect of Italy. Uh, viral video that went out, very, very interesting, talking about identity. Before we delve into that, just want to say that this episode is brought to you by Cardio Miracle. Go to quickmedia.com, cwicmedia.com. Scroll down to the bottom and find out why this is something that I take every day and the benefits that I personally have seen from this product. All right, now with Giorgia Maloney, this is a, a viral video that, that went out really infuriating quite a few people. Uh, there's a lot that gets attached onto this as politics always grabs everything it can, tries to straw man, straw man everything uh, and, and push everything all the way to one side of the spectrum, right? So what's happened with this? Well, the video, primarily is about identity that that's the real interesting thing here we got somebody else here talking about identity and this is the battle that we are fighting in our culture and it's not just a cultural battle this is a religious battle this is a christian battle this is a battle for all religions really for families it is uh something that you know president nelson has talked a lot about in his what i call his identity hierarchy trying to lift all of these other identities up and above these three uh, identities, which are all personal, right? They're all about the self. They are child of God, uh, child of the covenant, and a disciple of Christ. But there is another primary uh, identity that doesn't have to do just with the self, and that is the family. And so where his identities are all about the individual and the person. I'm going to go into this in another episode shortly. We need to also talk about the family and, and what goes beyond the self because there are collectives that are involved with this that go beyond the self and expressive individualism, etc. So let's go to this video here and just kind of piece by piece. It's very short. But we're going to go through it piece by piece. It's in Italian, but we have the subtitles here. Uh, if you are on audio, I'll, I'll read those as we go along here. But just listen to what she says. I want you to think in your mind, by the way, as you're going through this, what American politician do you think would speak this way? Keep that in mind as we go through this. Potrei farne tante altre di queste domande. A monte c'è quella che ci facciamo oggi, perché la famiglia è un nemico? Perché la famiglia fa così paura. Okay. So here she is. She's the she's going to be the prime minister of Italy. And what is her talk here about? This segment of her talk about why is the family an enemy? She asks. Why is the family so frightening? This is this of everything she asks is the most important thing to me. Why is the family an enemy and why is the family so frightening? Now she's going to go into what I call identitarianism. And it's not nearly as bad in Italy as it is in the U.S., but there are attacks on the family, other attacks on the family in, in Italy that we may not have quite as strong here. You have a, a decreasing population much stronger in Italy than you, than you do in the United States. But center to what she is saying is the family. I, I have said this for a long time, identitarianism. What many people really call wokeism really is focused in on identitarianism. And it is the identity of the self and of your relationship within a family. The whole idea behind critical social justice, identitarianism, the religion of academia, is to break down the family. She gets it. She gets this. And, and so it goes in and it breaks up the relationships that you have. It's going to break up man and woman, the marriage, it, you know, sister, brother, parent, child, all of these relationships. This is a major part of what identitarianism is about, making the family the enemy. And by the way, it's important to understand, if you're, if you're and I've heard this before, right? I've heard this at church. 
I've heard people talk about this in this way. When they talk about something like the proclamation on the family, don't use it as a, um, as a club, basically, to hit somebody over the head. Okay, when do you use it and it's not being used as a club? For example, if I go in and I, and I quote the family proclamation on gender, and I'm not doing that to try and make anybody feel bad, but I'm defending the plan of salvation, am I using the family proclamation as a club? Right. If, if I go through and I talk about male-female roles, if I'm talking about how the 15 brethren at the time signing off on this said, prophesied, there is a prophecy in there. You hear, you hear a lot of critics of the church saying, well, they never prophesied. The prophets never prophesied. There is a prophecy in the family proclamation, right? That, that everything is going to break down and we are going to reap the, the, the east wind, basically. I'm paraphrasing, obviously. If, if the family breaks down, it will bring on the calamities foretold by previous prophets. So this is real. This is, this is not... It, you, we need to defend the traditional family. We can be tolerant with others. We can put our arms around others. But the ideal of, the, of a man and a woman, the idea of, ideal of marriage committed to one another and, and, and having children, that is the bedrock of civilization. And that is the, the, the crux, uh, along with the atonement, obviously, of the plan of salvation. That is, that is, that is exaltation. That is the ideal. And when we let the ideal go, everybody has their own choice. You may not want exaltation. You may not believe in exaltation. Fine. But do you believe in, in holding up society? Do you believe in holding up opportunity and health and well-being? Because as, as much as the world is a, a, a glass half empty with adversity and trials and suffering and death and murder and everything else it is also a, a glass half full and as long as as long as we have family once we take away the family that half glass that glass half full is gone there, there is no way to hold anything up as a bunch of individuals tied to what tied to the state so if you have president nelson's identity hierarchy on one side of the self it's not enough i'm not saying it's not enough from him i'm saying that's that's just the self that's the individual there is a hierarchical structure on the other side that has to do with our relationship with others and 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 we can put that in as starting you know of course we've already got child of god so you talk about a relationship with god but that relationship there with god would be crucial but our family structure is going to be right up there at the top, right? And then coming out from our family is going to what? It's going to the to a Zion people. It's Zion. It's a collective. It's a it's a righteous collective. And so when you break those things down, you break down a proper society, both spiritually and temporally. It is the four phases of the priesthood that I talk about, right? The ironic priesthood to me is the priesthood of the individual. It's the self. And, and, and you start with phase one of that, which is agency, right? That's, that's, your, that's obedience and repentance. And, and, your, and number two is speech and expression, right? So if you take away agency and then you take away expression and speech, you, you, you suffocate the individual. But on, but on the other side of that, it is family as the third phase of the priesthood starting with the Melchizedek priesthood. And it's, it's the first phase of the Melchizedek priesthood. And then the fourth phase is Zion. And so there is family. When you attack the family with identitarianism, you are breaking down the ability to build a proper society and to fulfill the purpose of man on earth. And here she is talking about the family and why it's being targeted as an enemy. And this is real. This is very, very real.
She goes on. C'è una risposta unica per tutte queste domande. Perché ci definisce, perché è la nostra identità. Okay, because perché it tutto defines quello us. che ci definisce in questo tempo... Let me back up here a little bit so that we can, we can read uh, as we go along here, right? Why is the family an enemy, she says? Why is the family so frightening? There is a single answer to all these questions. Because it defines us. <laughs> because it is our identity. Right? So she goes right into identity. We, we need to pay attention closely to this. And I know many people are, uh, that, that, that are, for example, leaning on the left side. They look at her and they're going to call her a fascist. And she's a, a right winger. And they're going to compare her to Mussolini. And they're going to you know, call her a capitalist and a, an imperialist and, and, and a hard right winger. I, you know, honestly, I don't know. I, I haven't seen that from her. I know she's hard on immigration. I know she's strong on, on Catholicism and religion. Uh, I think she's pro-life. Uh, is this why she's a radical? I, I would recommend, well, I would suggest to you that one of the major reasons, because this, in this, they're talking about this video and, and making, pu putting her out as an extremist because of this video. She's being held up as an extremist because she's holding up the family. I, I, I think you've really got to focus in on that. She's an extremist because she's supporting the family. I want you to go back now to my original question about U.S. politicians. Who would say this? That culture is, is making the family an enemy. Why wouldn't they say that? Why, why not? Because just like Georgia Maloney here, they'd be made out as an extremist for supporting the traditional family. And by the way, that includes Latter-day Saint politicians. Latter-day Saint politicians. I, I don't, I can't imagine Mike Lee saying this. You know, I'm talking about conservative people. I can't, can you imagine Mitt Romney making a speech about defending the traditional family uh, against the culture that is pushing against identity? Not gonna happen. That's not in the numbers, it's not in the market surveys, it's not in the data. And it causes conflict. Again, in our church, we have this horrible value of thinking that no conflict is a, a, a the way we're supposed to be, is a very high value. Right? So we, we've, we go along with a spiral of silence and we don't defend something as precious as the family or now they're going after the children are, are, are we going to just allow that to happen in our schools because we don't want to upset anyone or ruffle any feathers because our value is so high it's higher than the children it's higher than marriage it's higher than families i speak of the value of of avoiding conflict That's why, regardless of what her other politics are, and, and I don't know much about her, for her to stand up and say this, knowing the stones that are going to be thrown at her, I, I, I find it very, very admirable. Let's keep going. Nostra identità. Perché tutto quello che ci definisce Because everything that defines us is now an enemy. Per chi vorrebbe for those who would like us to no longer have an identity and to simply be perfect consumer perfetti. slaves. Okay, now, she's going to go into something else that I wouldn't go into necessarily and talk about basically the, the financial uh, uh, worldly network, right, of investment and, and creating everybody as a perfect consumer uh, because we lose our own identities. We lose our identity with our families. We lose our identity with our gender. We lose our identity with uh, everything, right? Except for race. That seems to be pushed pretty hard. Um, but that's not where I would go with it. I understand what she's saying. And, and, and what she's saying is on that side over here where I talk about the, the third and the fourth phases of the priesthood under the Melchizedek priesthood, when you're talking about groups, What you have, just like on, the, on, on President Nelson's identity hierarchy, those three 
identities and then the big line we talk about drawing below those and having all other labels and identities below that. Well, it's the same thing over here, right? It, it, it's the identity of group uh, hierarchy as well. And, and what is that? That's going to be family and Zion and then everything else below that, right? You get another line drawn underneath that. And then there's everything else that's going to come down below that. Well, one of the things below that line is the state, right? The more you break down the family, the more you build up the state. Look at the welfare system. Look at single mothers in the United States. The more you can break down the family, the more individuals are reliant upon the state. So in that sense, I agree with what she's saying. I just wouldn't have used the same words. E allora è sotto attacco l'identità nazionale. So she says, and so they attack national identity, they attack religious e identity. E sotto attacco religiosa. E sotto attacco l'identità di genere. They attack gender identity. E sotto attacco l'identità familiare. They attack family identity. Look at how she's talking about identity. This is great. This is this this discussion this topic has got to be front and center and you can see president nelson and the brethren have been doing this slowly for many many years and really starting starting to codify it and and bring it to the forefront much more now but it is about identity she's right look at what she says non devo potermi definire I can't define myself italiana, as an Italian, a Christian, donna, a woman, madre, a no? mother. Io devo essere cittadino X, I have to be a citizen X, X, genitore uno, genitore gender due, X, devo parent essere one, un I must be a number. Solamente... Let me back up here on the parent thing here. You know, uh, our good friend, the, the, the greatest hero of anti-racism, Ibram X. Kendi, in his latest book, How to Raise an Anti-Racist, he takes the term parent away even. So when she says parent one or parent two, what you'll start to see here, and it will begin to be used more and more, will be caregiver, right? It'll be a caregiver. Because again, if you can pull the relationship away from, from children to parents and just go to a caregiver, you pull apart that responsibility. You pull apart the relationship of parent and child. Over and over, I think it was 170 some odd times in, in Ibram X. Kendi's latest book, he replaces parent with caregiver with the excuse that, well, there's others that might, you know, there could be a step parent or a grandparent or a social worker or somebody else. And that's how you need to, you, know, you can see how this slippery slope just pulls further and further away from our identities from our relationships. So her parent one and parent two, well, I think it, she's going to be saying soon, I must be citizen X, gender X, right? Think of Latin X. I saw children X on Twitter the other day. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, citizen X, gender X. And instead of parent one or parent two, it will be caregiver one or caregiver two because you can't be a mom or a dad, and you can't be a spouse, right? All, all those things are very slowly but surely eroding. And those of you who are um, very much against what I say and listen to what I say anyway, you're going to fight against that and say that's not true, right? Th those things aren't true, but it is. Th those things are true. Those titles, those relationships are being chipped away at. And you need to think to yourself, Eventually, you will have to do this yourself. Do you support the traditional family? Or are you going to push it to the side? Because it, it's not going to work both ways. It will not work both ways. If you support identitarianism, it's going to gain so much momentum soon. You will see that it will, it will not just be attacking, which it already is, the traditional family, but it will be destroying it which it already is. So when she says that you're not a parent, you're not a citizen, you're not a gender, you're just X, 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 right? We're all just X, Latin X, children X, parent X. Then all you become is a number. I wouldn't say that you're just a number, 
for her, she's saying that we're all going to be numbers for the financiers, right? I would say that we all become objects. That's what I would say. We become physical objects. We become consumers. We become supporters of the state or supporters of the really what fascism really is of the the private the large private enterprises that are in cahoots with the state so i must be a number why she says because when i am only a number when i no longer have an identity or roots then i will be the perfect slave at the mercy of financial speculators or or investors is what she's saying. So, and I would move that more toward the state, right? Then, then you become a slave to the state. And, and it happens always. You break down the family, you break down the individual, then, then, then you have the state. And that's everything that is rooted in Marxian tenets. Everything that is rooted in Marxian tenets. Break down marriage, Right? Radical feminism, break down marriage, break down the family so that you can raise the state up. She says, we'll be the perfect consumers. That's the reason why. That's why we inspire so much fear. That's why this event inspires so much fear. Okay, I, I think that that's not all of it. But, but I do think that that is a big part of it, right? That there is a big part of it. And understand that, that anytime you have a large civilization, and I'm talking about now a global civilization as well as uh, national civilization and, and state and the West versus the East, all of those things, all of those types of civilizations, the, the powers that are there, the power that is there, is always going to fight against the family and the individual, eventually. Because eventually, once there is enough power there, just like we learned in the Doctrine and Covenants, it will seek more power, and it will not have checks and balances eventually as it gains more and more and more power. And the only way it can get that is to fight against families, traditional families, and against the individual. Hence... Identitarianism. La ragione per la quale oggi questo appuntamento fa tanta paura. Perché noi non vogliamo essere dei numeri. Noi siamo qui per dire che noi non vogliamo numeri. We will defend the value of the human being, and that goes back to the individual. Obviously, that goes back to President Nelson's identity hierarchy. Non siamo dei numeri. Noi difenderemo il valore della persona umana. Every single human being, because each of us has a unique genetic code that is unrepeatable. Every one of us is unique. And it's not just the DNA physically. It is our agency. That is even higher. Right? Each of us has our agency. That is the first phase of the priesthood. We all have our own individual agency to choose what we want, who we want to become. And like it or not, she says, that is sacred. <laughs> no one's going to talk like this. The, the, you know, 50 years ago, maybe in the U.S., no one's going to talk like this in the United States. Not, not even any Latter-day Saint politician I know. Not, not going to happen. She says, we will defend it. You know... <laughs> There are so many in the church that will not defend it. You might believe in it, but you do not defend it. You will not draw the line. She says, we will defend it. We will defend God, country, and family. Those things that disgust other people so much. We will do it to defend our freedom. There has to be a line drawn. You've got to draw. You, we're, we're being slowly boiled in water like the frog, right? Dropped into the water, turn on the, the burner, and we are slowly being boiled with identitarianism, critical social justice, CRT, all of it. 
We are slowly being boiled in this culture. And before we know it, it's going to be hotter than we can handle. And we will be cooked to the point that we will be converted or unaware of just how far the religion of academia has taken us. Okay, she goes on about the financial speculators more. That is why I came here today. She taught, and then she goes to Chesterton here. And, and I'm just going to go over Chesterton's, uh, uh, you know, this is, uh, let's see if I had that, I do. Right, okay, so this is G.K. Chesterton, uh, philosopher, writer, and a religious person, right? And, and this is what he says. And this is what she goes over here. I'll just go ahead and play this on the on here. She can hear her Italian uh, ormai here. Più di un fa, and I'll just read this as she goes through se lo, it. Se lo trovo. She's looking for it here. Fuochi verranno attizzati Fires per dimostrare che due più due fa qua. that two and two make four. Spade verranno sguainate Swords will be drawn to prove that leaves are green in, in summer. Quel Qu tempo è quote. arrivato, signori. That time Siamo has pronti. arrived, she says. Grazie. We are ready and thank you. Okay. So again, let me reread that quote from uh, uh, G.K. Chesterton. It says, fires will be kindled to testify that two and two make four. This is the great postmodern argument of relative truth. Two plus two can, can be five. That's the argument. You, as a man, can be a woman. You, as a woman, can be a man. You are not a child of God. You are not a child of the covenant. You are not a disciple of Christ. There is no absolute truth. That is the postmodern injection into critical social justice and what many call wokeism. And, it, and it's, it's infecting the church strongly. You've seen it. I know you've seen it. It is infecting the church at the local levels, in the wards, in the stakes, and in communications. We need to break the spiral of silence as members of the church. And, and we need to stand up for truth. We need to stand up for principles. We need to stand up for the family and, and the traditional family as the ideal uh, uh, structure of civilization, the ideal unit. There is prophecy in that family proclamation. As I'm looking for that, uh, look, I don't know what else Georgia uh, Maloney is about, right? Maybe, maybe she's going to be a horrible prime minister. Maybe she's got really extreme positions elsewhere. doesn't seem like it to me, depending on what your politics are. But uh, I, I don't know. But regardless, looking at, at this specific speech and why this video went viral, she is spot on on this, spot on. Identity, 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 family, family, family. And when we break away from that, this is what we find. This is the prophecy from those 15 men in 1995. We warn that the individuals who violate covenants of chastity, right, think about what we're, where we've come with that even since 1995, that violate covenants of chastity, who abuse spouse or offspring, or who fail to fulfill family responsibilities, will one day stand, account, stand accountable before God. Further, we warn that the disintegration of the family. <laughs> this is, all of this is about the disintegration of the family and the breakdown of your own personal identity. We further warn that the disintegration of the family will bring upon individuals, communities, and nations the calamities foretold by ancient and modern prophets. Okay, look. What? You don't think we're there? You don't think that's what's happening right now? You don't think that there is a full frontal attack on the family right now, today? It's happening at breakneck speed. It's happening in the church. It's happening on the BYU campuses. It's happening in our culture in the U.S. stronger than anywhere, including Italy. But great to see what she's doing about it. Great to see that she's plugged into that, that she understands it, and she's willing to fight against this 
culture, right? It is no longer the counterculture today. The counterculture are those that fight for the traditional family. That's the real punk today. Punk today is fighting for the traditional family. Punk today is fighting for being a child of God. Because the culture of wokeness and the culture of the religion of academia has taken over all of the major institutions in the United States. Let's break away. Let's break off the shackles of the spiral of silence and understand that if we are going to stand for what we believe in, and we must, that there is going to be conflict. That doesn't mean you invite contention. It doesn't mean that you go after individuals and, and be venomous in, in attacks or anything else. But it does mean that you stand up for it. You stand up for truth. You stand up for the family. You stand up for identities. Thanks for listening.